Hello there, welcome back to the agenda. Right, okay, big topic of conversation for the next half hour or so. And we're turning back to that campaign to ban smartphones in schools in the UAE. Now, if you were listening on Friday, you'd have heard us talk about it. And it's really gaining traction among both parents and teachers. It's called, so the movement itself is called the Greenwise sorry, the Screenwise Child Collective. It's a grassroots group and it was started by parents at Jamira English Speaking School, or Jess. And now, amazingly, dozens of schools are actually considering changing their rules on mobile phones. One solution being considered are these kind of lockable pouches that you can use to improve pupil focus. They kind of have one of those tags on them that you get in a shop, you know, so you don't steal clothes. <laughs> and you, cl- you close the pouch with one of those and you'd have to tap it as you leave the school grounds if you want to unlock your phone. Um, leading the charge is a mother called called Amelia Hockey. She's a mother of four and speaking to us on Friday, she told us that a lot of parents are really concerned about phone use, but they don't want their children to feel like the odd one out. No one wants their child to be ostracized. And that is another motivation really to allow like-minded parents to come together to share their concerns, but really find a community where they can be sure that if they decide not to give their own child a phone that there would be other children within that community that they've now connected with and you know we do already have splinter groups so we've got 11 schools across Dubai and two in Abu Dhabi who now have their own groups which are enabling uh, parents within those communities but I think you're right it's all about changing the mindset and ultimately the dream would be to make the dumb phone cool and I think there are companies that are doing amazing things in that space as well. So you heard Amelia there mention the dumb phone. We are going to be talking about the wise phone in the next few minutes. But it's fair to say that parents who are following this campaign, who are supporting this campaign, are pointing to strong evidence that the excessive use of mobile phones can lead to things like screen addiction, and that can in turn negatively impact mental health by causing anxiety, you get depression, also sleep disturbances. However, there is also a fear that removing tech from our kids will actually leave them ill-prepared for the world that they inhabit. Childhood education expert Dr. Alison Burrows from Middlesex University, Dubai, told us that is not necessarily the case. Let's think about adult behaviors. When do we start training children to engage in certain adult behaviors? Most countries around the world have a drinking age, they have a gambling age, they have a driving age. Should we really be putting a smartphone in the hand of a child and think that they have the capacity, that they have the brain development to be able to deal with and process an entire world of information that we're opening up to? Okay, so those are the words uh, of Dr. Alison Burrows, who's an expert in this field, and also Amelia Hockey, a mother of four and one of the founders of the Screenwise Child Collective. But we were keen to find out how schools were reacting to this campaign. And joining me now in the studio is Christopher Healy. He's Christopher Seeley. I'm sorry, I'm really skipping over my words today. It's very odd. Principal of Dove Green School in Dubai. Chris, great to have you join us in the studio. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm very well. Thank you for for arranging this. Well, it's good to have you here because uh, is there a group of parents in your school who brought this campaign to you or, uh, or were you already worried about the use of mobiles by children? So we do have a group of parents that are concerned about mobile phone use. We actually have a range of opinion on this that we speak to our parent communities about. Um, I think from the, the earlier piece, you get an understanding that we have parents that want students to have mobile phones in school. We have a group of parents that don't want any mobile phone in school. But um, from a from a school leadership perspective, um, we are certainly moving down the line of tightening up our policy around it. Our current policy is never seen, heard or used. So essentially it's often in the in the child's bag. But we are finding that there's still an engagement with mobile phones, there's still a temptation, there's still 
um, students trying to find an opportunity to get to that phone and, and it is a distraction from learning uh, at, you know at a very basic school level but also some of the you know the social emotional and um, you know developmental um, aspects we're really seeing a decline in that with students accessing those mobile phones in school so we are looking to towards a total ban and moving in that direction how old are the kids at your school do you have grown up I think of Gloom as grown-ups. You have teenagers. No, we, we go to year 10, so GCSE level. Uh, so we have 13, 14-year-olds in school. So, um, you know, this this is a regular debate in terms of the, the, the use of mobile phones. It's an ongoing challenge for students and staff in terms of us trying to reduce the use of mobile phones and um, and students trying to use them. And, you know, even personally myself, I think my mindset has changed a lot post-COVID. Um, we were talking about educational technology and how we can have students access that technology. Um, I think now most school leaders would agree. So, yeah, I mean, do you have, and also obviously as the children get older, there's laptops as well. So it's yeah. just this constant access to the internet and to social media and to, frankly, dodgy material. Yeah, um, I think there's a, an important distinction to be made there, um, and it's one that we discuss a lot with our parent body, is that there's educational screen time and there's there's dumb screen time with, with the scrolling, and my two boys are as guilty as anybody else for trying to get the three minutes, or they'll, they'll have figured out at eight years old how they how they need to, yeah, to, to get that time. Apparently, if you have so. a limit on screen time as well, the other thing they can do, just, just, just as to sort of, my children are still honest with me, it'll stop, but um, if you reset the phone, hard reset it, so press the, or, the, or the iPad, so both buttons at the same time it resets the screen time you get another 45 minutes that's what we limit so just so you know they can do that too so yeah, sorry Chris no, no, but, uh, wonderful I'll have to check that with my two <laughs> iPads and see if see if they're doing the same but yeah. but yeah that distinction between educational screen time and sort of drone scrolling dumb dumb scrolling is, is really key here um, I think this comes down to, to staff and school culture and, and in terms of you know how how on it are the staff in terms of when they use that iPad how is that planned what are we using it for? How are we monitoring that? Um, I think too often an iPad is given as an easy option or, uh, you know, uh, you can research this, that, that research term I hate with my teachers and they know that. I do not want students researching um, or researching in inverted commas. Um, so, yeah, just, just making sure that they understand exactly what they're using that for and, and teachers should be setting those boundaries. Schools should be setting the boundaries in terms of what educational screen, screen time looks like. You referenced kind of college and career readiness earlier in terms of the, the world that they're going to go into and the, the technology that they're going to need to use. They do need to have access to that, but they need to be taught how to use it appropriately. And, um, you know, I don't think any school in the world will allow... Um, we would want students even having those three minutes so let's say uh, yeah yes. i mean they can have a computer science class i'm all for them learning how to i don't know put inverted commas around things so they know how to search you know in the right engines and you know how to find uk websites i mean i, I learned how to do that at journalism school i probably didn't learn at school because it hadn't been invented yet um but but nevertheless this idea that there's these smartphones circulating around schools because even if you're a, a 10 year old I mean my boys have got they're 9 and 11 at the moment and they have friends who have the best iPhone on the market frankly and those although those phones are currently not allowed in school in the junior school that's my understanding they do sometimes sneak in so what is the solution some schools are considering these sort of yonder pouches which is when you put the, the phone in a pouch and it's sealed while you're on the school gate is that something that you might consider yeah definitely I mean I think you know as I said our policy is never seen heard or, or used but we don't feel that's effective enough now we, we, we think we've we need to move on from that and, and review that for next academic year but um, obviously there's there's difficulties around us handling children's mobile phones you know, what happened do they put it in the pouch does the does security guard drop it uh, you know there's there's a number of logistical issues around that for schools to consider um, I know schools at home that, you know in February last year the, the the government in the UK brought out mobile phone guidance for schools that was pretty robust in terms of uh, some schools are now saying no phones on campus we're not going to take them and um, we're not going to allow you to check them in but no phones on campus whether that would work in the UAE context because what you've got to remember is we're dealing with a parent demographic that are also completely connected and also want that it's not necessarily just the students using that we have parents that will regularly try and contact students in school through social media through um, sms particularly iMessage because it's very hard to block um, and also students that will message home and we get a phone call so there's there's a lot of moving parts with this one in terms of how we we actually do it my view now is that we go to a complete ban on mobile phones i don't feel students need them in school i think schools 
can, will and do provide the necessary technology that students need to learn. And you know, there is a method, there's an old fashioned method, if you need to contact your child at school, you can call reception and I'll go and get them and, and pass that message on. You know, there's, there's absolutely no need for parents to be as connected as they are during the school day. That's, that's our job as teachers to, to, to do that for them, if you like. I mean, as far as banning them entirely for under 16s, how, what do you think of that? As a, I mean, I'm asking you this as a parent and as a teacher with a good overview of this. Do you think that that might be an option? It's, it's con what they're considering debating in the UK. Yeah, I think it's an option and it's a worthwhile debate. Um, I think there'll be some fairly robust counter arguments on that from both sides. And that would be with my parent hat on from parents, but I think also from um, teachers and school leaders that there may be um, some, some counter arguments on that to, to blanket ban them across the UE. Uh, I think it's incredibly difficult to enforce. Um, you know, I can think of multiple incidents where we've we've assumed, or you, you never assume, but we, we expect students not to have the phone, but the parent is telling them, we'll tell the school you've not got a phone, but the phone is still in the bag because I need them to call a taxi to get home and it'll be some trivial reason uh, convenience. for it. Con convenience. Usually it's yeah. convenience. Yeah. It, it, it may be convenience for the parents. So in terms of, of a total ban, um, I would be happy to trial it. I, I would be happy to, to see how that works. I read an interesting article after, after we spoke on the weekend just uh, last night about schools have managed to implement complete bans in three days um, wow. and, and turn that around at home in terms of, of trial schools. And, and they've done that in multiple different schools from lots of different demographics and backgrounds. But, um, but yeah, I think it's something that we, we need to look at now because... Um, you know, phones are a distraction. And again, reading around the, the topic before I came on air today, yeah. um, uh, there's some research that suggests students need 20 minutes to reconnect with their learning if they've been engaged distracted. with a mobile phone because they're distracted. Or if the phone's in the bag and they hear it, there's a lot of research now that's saying up to 20 minutes for students to re-engage. Now, if you've got an hour GCSE math lesson, you've lost 20 minutes with that child just because there's a phone there. So. Just because they heard it beep. Yep. Chris, I'm going to keep you with me. Chris Seeley, Principal of Dove Green School in Dubai. We're going to continue this conversation coming up in the next few minutes. I'd love it if you got in touch with your reaction to this. How would you feel if phones were banned in schools? How do you feel about being told, for example, that your child would not be allowed to take a phone into school? Do you think it is well overdue or do you think it's a terrible idea? Get in touch. <laughs> it's got people talking my goodness me should phones smartphones any phones be banned or behind the school gates lots of people getting in touch with their views 4001 if you want to join the conversation that's the text or you can whatsapp me on 04871 hint says yes phones should be banned the cost of distractions and bullying outweighs any advantage of having phones at school brian says i guess this is just me but i feel children should not be given phones till the age of 18. This will help them appreciate the facilities more, also help them to be more organised and independent. Um, here we go. Adam says, maybe I'm just old, but if I look at my phone or even an iPad before bed, I notice a really big difference in my sleep depth and feeling refreshed in the morning. I can understand how these devices affect young minds, and that is why I still haven't introduced my children to anything like that. Kids should just enjoy themselves naturally. Anais says there is nothing students need on their smartphones that current schools don't offer research-wise. Better ban phones, not needed, it's well overdue. My kids never had it at school, only after 16. Is it a need or a want? Install a payphone, both that they have to pay, that students can access to call parents or taxis, etc. My goodness me, they, the comments keep on coming. Thank you very much indeed. I love hearing from you. We kept our resident teacher in the school. We've got Chris Seeley. He's the principal of Dove Green School in Dubai. Um, Chris has already explained to us that this is a concern for him, but it is a very textured issue. Chris, what would pupils think if you started banning these phones from, from school? Um, <laughs> I, I know your answer. I, I, I'm smiling because it's a fairly, fairly obvious answer. I yeah. think uh, my students would find any reason to keep the phone in their hand. Anything, they will tell you anything to keep those phones. And again, I go back to my own kids in terms of the, you know, the same battles that I'm sure most parents are having in evenings and weekends in terms of devices. But students would be dead against this. They will find you know, they're smart, they'll find educational reasons to keep the phone, but, but again, I would go back to my earlier comment that the, 
um, there's no real educational benefit to having phones in school and, and you know th this is why we're talking about going down this this line of, of banning them completely and interestingly and I don't think I'm oversharing here most of the major incidents that we deal with in our schools um, uh, have some kind of mobile phone background to it there'll be some kind of element whether it's a photo or a video or a parents downloaded something from TikTok or, or Facebook and that um, I'm interested in your, your your caller's comment there just around the, the bullying aspect because it's a word that we throw around a lot in schools but um, most of those uh, comments or concerns from parents now are relating to mobile phones and social media issues around that so I mean it yeah. all got cameras on it I mean the amount of you know the amount of stress that I, I've heard that kids don't aren't silly anymore because they're worried that someone's going to catch it on a phone and it's going to be shared more widely. You know, at school discos, no one's doing silly chicken dances anymore because they're worried it's going to be shared more widely. Mer has got in touch saying my main issue is many parents are clueless about digital parenting and they have iPads with no limits and unrestricted access to social media. They can download any app, which is a bit like sending your child into the wild west. Alex says another aspect. Schools, for example, have uniforms to unify student status. Not every parent can afford having the latest smartphone and the plan to go with it. And that, of course, has an impact on students both at school and at home. How about those parents, Chris? Like, is it... Would it... I, I, you see, as a parent, I would love the fact that no mobile phones were allowed in the school. I would consider it... I would embrace it. But is that not the case with all parents? No, and I think you raise a valuable point. Part of the movement that we've discussed is all around parents uh, asking, requesting mobile phones, but I think schools in the UAE and globally, globally uh, they have a responsibility to educate parents in the same way that we would around kind of educational technology with GCSE resources or, you know, as we have done with primary platforms like Seesaw or, or these other communication things. I do feel we're at the point now where schools have a, a duty of care to the community to educate parents on social media usage and, and this has been raised with, with me and some of our weekly breakfast with the principals things, can you show us how to do it um, which is, is actually quite a nice place to be that parents feel secure enough in the school that they can come forward and ask for that help but I'm wondering if that's now, as we're talking today, if that's now kind of the missing piece of this that schools now need to educate parents on what their standards and expectations are around the school but again you've got to apply the, you've got to, uh, apply the context of the school and the demographic and what the the kind of vision and values of the school are going forward. It's a lot harder than you'd expect it to be, wouldn't you? As a radio host, I was a bit like, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to be able to join this campaign. I'm going to, we're, going to, we're going to change things by September. But you realise very quickly it's, it's much more textured than that. Yeah, and, and I think, um, again, discussing it with colleagues this morning, it's really not black and white at all. Mm. There's so many contextual layers to this. There's so many uh, different moving parts for schools to consider around it. And, and also you've got... Um, you know, so many different families and from different cultural backgrounds and different cultural beliefs and, you know, uh, faiths and, and whatever else that, that will impact that decision. And that maybe sounds like a crazy thing to say around a mobile phone, but once you dig a bit deeper, when you start to dig into the issues around yeah. social media and mobile phones, there's a lot of underlying beliefs that you need to, to break down in terms of building that school culture around it. And what do we want our school to look like in terms of being a, a safe place for students to come and learn? Wow, interesting stuff. This is going to be a topic that will run and run. Chris Seeley, Principal of Dove Green School in Dubai, thank you so much for your time today. We will thank you. follow your story for sure, as it through every interesting twist and turn. Um, but yeah, please, everyone listening now, keep your comments coming. There is this sense that there are some parents out there who want their children to be able to take a phone to school. If you're one of those parents, I'm not. So I kind of... You know, I'm sort of looking for those parents who do think it's appropriate, um, partly just to learn from that and also so we get both sides of this argument. So please do get in touch. 4001 or WhatsApp me on 04871 5500. Tell me I'm wrong. You're AMB News.